and welcome to another episode of The Bottom Line. I'm your host, Lauren Khalil. Our show is brought to you by Whoop. May is Sleep Mania Month, and we're competing with our friends from Talking Elite Fitness, the Buttery Bros, and CrossFit Mayhem to see which team gets the highest sleep scores. We're all going to be bringing you sleep tips throughout the month, and Whoop is even giving out prizes to the top sleep scores on each team. Check out the description below to join our team or sign up to get a free strap and extra month's membership with our link. On today's episode, we're discussing the recent news that the CrossFit Games will stay in Madison, Wisconsin through 2023. Here to talk with me about the topic is our CEO and founder, Justin LaFranco. Justin, you were on the press conference this morning. Uh, CrossFit, they've had a lot of changes this calendar season. Earlier this season, I wrote about maybe some potential places and host cities that uh, they were looking to host the games in the future. Maybe Dallas, Texas as a prospect. But are we really surprised that they settled on another year being in Madison? No, nah, uh, not at all. I know, um, you know, there's two two major factors I think that uh, at play here. Um, number one is is most obviously there's been a change of leadership at CrossFit, and I just think that for continuity's sake, staying in an area where you're really clear on on the lay of the land inside their like the actual facilities and where things are at, and you don't have to go through as much work. Um, to, to plan an event where you already know the area. I mean, they've already had and successfully ran, um, you know, half, not quite half a dozen, there's been five events there. Uh, so, um, or this will be their fifth time running an event there. And it really just eases the burden on a new team just in order to be able to plan and execute and do all of those things. Uh, Madison's been, a, and number two, Madison's been just a very willing partner. I, and I think mm-hmm. uh, I might be reading in this a little bit, um, but the RFP, you know, um, outlined specific things that they were looking for. I don't know if the crop of finalists that they got, um, and we don't really even know who they are, met. Um, or really in interest them, perhaps. Um, and that could be for various number of factors and stuff. And the easiest thing to do, and they gave themselves the opportunity to extend anyways within the RFP that they asked, and they said it may be as early as 2020, but not necessarily. Um, that gave them a perfect opportunity. If they didn't find the right city fit um, to continue to go forward, and I think it was a very easy decision for them to make in the long run. Yeah, and I think having the perfect city um, is what the athletes deserve. And there have been so many changes throughout the past couple of seasons. But I do want to point out in the article, um, you had a quote from the general manager of sport, Justin Berg, and he said that the planning process for our team has been focused on executing this season exactly as published, then collecting feedback from athletes, event organizers, and partners so that we can make the right changes for next year's season and announce those details, hopefully by the beginning of the fourth quarter of the year. Um, so changes again to the format of 2023? Um, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's how I would read it. Um, you know, having been uh, covering this work for a long time, there, there have traditionally been incremental changes introduced year over year with CrossFit. Um, you know, they adjusted the number of, of regionals. They, um, they changed the number of events at regionals to kind of streamline it. They, it's been an iterative process. So while change right now sounds like a very scary thing, and it is kind of a scary thing because <laughs> we've gone through season by season drastic alterations and adjustments to the, the overall season structure. And what we're referring to is the qualification structure. Like how do you actually get to the CrossFit games? And how do you qualify? We've seen a ton of changes. And, and, and frankly, I think that's a scary word. So I want to temper people's expectations and say that, yeah, I mean, it could be big. It could be a wholesale adjustment and change. Um, they reiterated when, um, when Justin came on board is to, to head over all of, of the CrossFit games. Um, you know, he reiterated that we are going to keep it as written. You know, it was early, it was before the season had, had technically started. He said, "Hey, we're we're going to commit to, to running this season as written." And he was careful in his words. He said, "On executing this season exactly as published," and that's what they're doing. Could they make um, larger adjustments? Yeah, they could. It's a new team. It's it's new ideas, and it's it's very possible. I think that if you're sitting, uh, if you're competing this year, I think you should should prepare that that there could be a different qualification structure. But other than that, I don't know. But if I were me, come October of, 20, of this year, I'd be hitting refresh on the game's website um, because it does seem like it's very possible. Yeah, and speaking of changes that we could expect, um, even in the years to come, Berg also teased ahead that CrossFit would even consider an inter- international host city for as early as the 2024 games. Uh, what kind of like financial expectation does this put uh, maybe on athletes and even like CrossFit HQ as a whole? 
Yeah, um, international has been one of those areas where it, it seemed very unlikely that Cross was going to move in that direction. Um, previously, the big international play for them was the Invitational, um, the last one of which was in Melbourne, Australia, and that was um, in 2018 before the sweeping changes to the game season. And then always seemed to uh, draw a large crowd as a single day event. It was about like a two hour. Um, kind of all-star of the CrossFit Games um, type event. It was meant for TV and it was meant for international audiences. Now, the idea of actually moving the games all the way overseas hasn't, based on my conversations with others, hasn't seemed to be an, a, something that they were seriously, seriously considering. And I think that those who are getting their um, their hopes up that it will happen have to, have to keep in mind the financial costs and logistical challenges to actually doing that. Number one, it is a lot of money to put together the kind of games experience that the athletes go through with the ops, the, the various obstacles, not necessarily the obstacle courses, just the obstacles that they have to go through. They've got multiple different site types. They need water. They need space to build organically. They need intern, you know, inside locations, probably inside of a stadium. And then they have to be able to fly people back and forth from, from Boulder or what, or the West coast or wherever they're living in order to do site visits, to do planning, to do physical build outs. They need rogue to ship equipment. Um, people don't really realize that there's like 16 big rig trucks that get that get driven from Columbus to whatever location it is, whether it was that same deal in Carson and it's the same thing in Madison, just a shorter drive, but the amount of equipment that come to it, money and broadcasting elements, this is massive. For them to actually move it overseas successfully would, would require a significant commitment and they'd need 18 to 24 months at minimum to plan that out and to execute it flawlessly. Um, CrossFit doesn't like to do anything where they're going to set themselves up for a failure. So I, um, I, I know that European audience would love it. I know that Europe is a massive mm-hmm. growing part of CrossFit's uh, uh, competitive participation right now. So um, personally, I'd be all for it. I think it'd be great to, to, to go uh, across the Atlantic and, um, you know, go to one of, ma- one of the major um, CrossFit hubs uh, overseas, but um, they're open to it. That's the first time they've really, really said something like that definitively that they would consider moving the games overseas. I'm curious as a sports fan and somebody who's been in the space for so long, do you have a dream location for the, where the CrossFit games like would be held if you were the person to decide? Oh man, that's a tough one. Um, look, if I, if I had to pick, I'm going to (laughs) say, I really like, and everyone's going to hate me for saying this, so I'm just going to say it and then just live with the, uh, the, the harsh criticism <laughs> that's going to come. Um, People already have their feelings about you, Justin. This isn't going to change it. <laughs> no, it's not going to change it. Good, really bad, and like different. This, I'm going to couch this by saying I think that what makes the game successful is, is, is the ability to bring people there. It is, it is not the same thing as going to an NCAA game. It is not the same thing as going to a basketball game. My, hey, my favorite team is Los Angeles Lakers. I'm going to fly out to LA for for one day, and I'm going to fly back to, to Austin, Texas the next day. That's not the same scenario. This is a vacation. People take time off to go to this. It's like going to a multiple-day festival. So I think that accessibility and cheap flights and a hub where you can get out there and go, I think those things make sense because for getting participants, the athletes are going to travel wherever you tell them to go. So they're, they're, sure. you know, they're like, hey, you need to go to Montana. They're like, all right, we're going to Montana. Um I think Las Vegas is my favorite city, personally. I think it's got the infrastructure, Ooh. cheap hotels. It's got lots of entertainment. Um, I think that uh, uh, it's an international hub that flies from literally all over the world, from East Asia to Australia to Europe and Africa. They're, if people want to go to Vegas, Vegas makes it easy, man. And we're going to make it super easy for you to get in there and spend some money. And it's got a lot of infrastructure. And it's not nearly as big as Los Angeles, where we were previously, and we were just a drop in the bucket. It caters towards week-long events, literally conventions. Uh, the whole convention center is booked year, week over week, a whole year long. There are sports facilities now there now with, with professional teams that are competing there. The hockey arena can be converted into a, a, a more traditional arena. Those things aren't just static and filled with ice at all year long. Uh, Vegas would be my number one choice because I just think that it draws a lot of people that are just going to come for the whole week, make a holiday of it. And and that's fantastic. Um, not a super drivable place. You can't get there from Utah and you can get there from California. It's not quite as drivable as Madison because Madison draws in all the surrounding states and there's, there's lots of cities to draw from. Um, that would be, that would be, that would be my pick of the litter would be Vegas. But um, We'll see if you ever have yeah. a horse in the race for that one. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure I, I shot my horse a long time ago and it came to having an influence on whether uh, uh, CrossFit's decision making process. But, um, but you know, just a review for the, for the folks that are, that are on with us. I mean, Dallas, Denver, Austin, and Madison were the only cities mm-hmm. we were really able to confirm. Um, we called, I don't know, Lauren, we called probably oh my gosh. different cities and they either didn't yeah. respond or said no. Um, I'm not going to read into it too much, but I, I'm curious to see what level of interest there were from other cities and how many cities uh, uh, submitted bids. I'm not talking about you know a city like mine, which is New Braunfels, a city of 120,000 people, but cities that that are that that met the criteria that they are looking for, and they've outlined some very specific criteria. Um, and Lauren, I know you've dived into, into into that a lot over the last several months. So uh, I'm, frankly, I'm, I'm I'm curious to see how many people. I wonder how many finalists they had. I wonder if the interest was large or if it was small. I don't really know, but I do know that in 2016 when they were announcing Madison the interest was quite large I do know that because I had spoken with a number of individuals on the CrossFit game staff at the time and I also covered the transition from 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 Carson to Madison I know that there were a number of uh, a strong a strong um, a strong number of bids that's how I characterize it without knowing the number specifically yeah, and it's hard to really know how many bids were out there because, um, as you mentioned, I mean, we called dozens of uh, cities. We looked at maps. We went through a list. And most people just a flat answer, no, didn't really give a rhyme or a reason. Um, there were a couple that said they were considering it, but for whatever reason, they were focused on other sports that they were hosting, just weren't really interested in CrossFit. So, um you know, it would be cool if CrossFit provided the information of, hey, these are the cities that uh, put bids in, because then it, it just kind of adds the excitement as sports fans that, oh, my city is on the list of potentially hosting the CrossFit Games. I think that that just adds momentum to the sport and the conversation in general. Yeah, um, it, it would, certainly. Um, you know, CrossFit's been running their events um largely in a similar format, you know, multi-day format that, um, that, uh, you know, involves outdoor, indoor and water events, a combination of all of those, uh, over the course of a, of a multi, you know, a four to five day period of time. Um, some, they may find challenges in certain cities to, to meet those needs, um, in a way that logistically makes sense without driving too far or asking fans to drive too far. Cause you do need a lot of things on site in order to accommodate mm-hmm. that. Otherwise, you know, fans, uh, sort of like the Olympics, you know, if, when they're hosting Los Angeles, there's going to be hour to two hour drives between the sites for different events yeah. and, and they may, they may, um, you know, face some challenges that way. Um, I, 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 I wish they would release more information about who's under consideration, but I understand it's a negotiating process and without sure. um, swaying, uh, you know, public opinion one way or the other, not that necessarily that would factor into the decision-making process. I do wish they would tell us more because it allows us to talk more about it. Um, and, and it is fun to sort of, um, I don't know, you know, guess and think about who's going to be the next host city because, you know, the games is the Super Bowl, right? So, uh, but like the the same way that people like get excited about like the bids (laughs) in for the Super Bowl, what city is it going to be in and all of that? (laughs) Exactly. Like the Super Bowl, I wish that we were talking about where the games is going to be in year over year over year. I don't mind that it stays in the same place year over year. I think it would be much cooler though, uh, personally, um, having, having been not only an attendee of games for, almost a decade now, but covering it, you know, from, uh, from a business perspective, um, Mm -hmm. it would be very cool to be seeing it located in different places. And so we're actually talking about what's going to be in 2024 right now, but we already know what 22 and 2023 is. And that they, if they, they would, they would probably have to change the format of the game slightly, and they'd have to probably move away from involving the other divisions outside of the professional league divisions um, in order to do that, because because running those elements is a massive, massive undertaking. And so they would probably need to make some adjustments to the games in order to accommodate it. But I for, personally would be a fan of, of changing arenas and it would allow them to spread um, more CrossFit cheer you know, around the United States or even potentially yeah. around the globe because they would only be committing to, let's just say, you know, uh, a Copenhagen or a Berlin for one games and then, and then simplifying some of the game structures and divisions that way um, they could make that a little bit more of a feasible operation. I personally would be a big fan of that. Um, whilst they would have probably need to, to find a way to incorporate the other divisions in other live arenas and stuff and find ways mm-hmm. of engaging those audiences, this, those community of competitors there that, that want their own version of the Super Bowl. And I think that's, I think, I think you could do that. I'd personally be a fan of, of changing every one or two years. I think that would be um, really cool. Because then you get to see a lot. 
hey, you can just you go to San Jose, you go to Austin, yeah. you go to you go to Cleveland, Ohio. You know, down great to opportunity Florida. to travel and have like a, a week long yeah. trip at a new destination every year, and just factor that into going and watching the CrossFit yeah. Games and the fittest people on earth throw down. I'd Too bad that that uh, won't but, happen. <laughs> Probably well, not. what's your bottom uh, line, probably. Justin, to 2023, back to Madison? Yep. 20, uh, we're going to be in Madison for the next two games. Um, so this this summer, next summer, um, they did indicate this is going to be their last and their final year. This is the sixth and this will be the sixth and final game. So there should be an expectation that we're going to hear more news. It, it does tend to get announced about 18 months in advance. So if you're trying to look at what the clock is, you could say maybe this time next year. We would probably have an indication of where the games is going to move. So use that as a barometer for, um, for, for you know, your weather vane <laughs> to figure out when do I pay attention again for, for announcements of this sort. And the last thing is that there's going to be some changes, or at least they, they've, they've announced and they've signaled this early that they're, that they're considering changes to that. Now, what changes they are, I don't know, big or small. But the, the, the uh, beginning of Q4 this year, so that'll be around October, I think that we could be looking at, and that's sort of in time frame with the rule book getting released, you know, they would uh, be looking at potentially some changes to the season and how it operates. So I know that's a lot, but <laughs> there you go. A long winded bottom line, but that's okay. If Sorry. you haven't gotten your cheese curds or your spotted cow yet, you have two more opportunities at the CrossFit <laughs> Games to do so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've had plenty of both, and I'm looking forward to the next round of it um, this summer. So. Perfect. Thanks, Justin. We'll see you next time.